Hi, this is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto and welcome to my GV Beta Graphics tutorial. So in today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to use pipette node inside VVV and generate this kind of visual. So it looks sort of like Kinect uh, depth input, but I'm only using a live camera input. And together with pipette, you can get this kind of result quite easily. So yeah, let's get started. By the way, we can move the camera. So it really looks like Kinect thingy. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so this is the goal that we're going to reach today. So if you want to skip the whole tutorial, just copy, just try copy pasting this patch. Uh, somehow it just froze. I don't know what I did. Okay, now it's working. And so this is my live input from the camera. So I have a camera attached on the top of my computer. And then it inputs to HSCB to do some color correction. And then I'm using pipe node here. And then I'm just connecting those to constant buffer as a color and a lot of segments. And that's it. So let's get started now, uh, step by step, how to create this kind of visual. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this one. Uh, then start it from scratch. As always, okay, so first of all, you need a render node, as always, and then aspect, race, aspect ratio, and then a camera. Uh, I'll use camera orbit, as always. By the way, I think I introduced a pipette node in a different uh, tutorial, roughly, but I'll, I'll explain a bit de in detail with today's tutorial. So we'll need group node, group DX11, and then axis and grid. Okay, so now with this, we can move around the camera. We know where we are. I'll zoom a bit uh, with the renderer and I'll put this guy here. Get a little bit higher, okay. Then get everything below. Okay, so first thing I want to explain so this pipe node, let's have this pipe node out from the scratch. Uh, we'll be using this pipe DX11 texture 2D. If you've already learned CV image, you can also use it inside CV image, but today we're not using it, so we just need this one. So, what it does, I mean, if you open up F1. It explain everything, but I'm gonna skip this part. I'm gonna explain it from scratch. So first thing we'll do, uh, pipe it node uh, video. So first of all, I need a camera input. So I'll be using this uh, video in. Uh, if you haven't used it, uh, it's you can get all these live input from whatever uh, device or camera device you're using. I have a Microsoft Live Cam Studio mounted on top, so I'll use this one. And to use this, it's always red because you have to set up the format, video format. It depends on what kind of camera you're using. Uh, resolution, again, depends on what kind of camera you're using. And then frame rate, mine's 30. And then rest, it's all fine, and just un enable this. Okay, so now I should get a live input. As you see, pipe it is already sort of like doing something, but uh, it only has one spread out because for pipe it, now at the moment the default is in the center. So when I put my hand in the center, it sort of like outputs the color of my skin. So this is the color of my skin seen from this video. I can actually uh, make a, another preview, not a render, but a preview. And I'll just make this guy a little bit smaller. And then, so this is my live input from my camera. So when I put this in the center, it outputs my, the color of my skin, right? However, for today, I need to get a grid of color. So not only the center, but I need like the entire scene to do so. I just need to specify this X, Y for the pipette uh, with the position that I want. So linear, I'll have a linear spread. Linear spread has two of them, spreads, and then I'll use cross, and then I'll connect, just for this time, I'll just connect this way for x, y, and I'll create uh, 30. And then now it has uh, x and y output as 900, because what cross does, it's basically crosses all the amounts, so 5 times 3, 5 times 3, and it's, in total it's 15, right? So cross does that for you. So this, and then I'll use a vector 2D join. 
And then I connect this one to X, Y input for the pipette. Uh, just remove this guy out the ways. And then I put this one below and then put this guy back here. Okay. Now it's or organized. Uh, so now I should see, okay, so now I see 900 out from uh, the color uh, from pipette, which is basically the amount of value I have. And each of them should have different color. I can actually check that uh, by using control I and then changing the slice mode, count mode to color roll. And I'll just change this one to 30 by 30. And then you can actually preview all the outputs that I have. So as you see, now I have 900 outputs. This guy should be rendering 900 colors that it's output from the pipette. And it's all, as you see, from a camera input. Okay, so I see that it's all working. Uh, and just in case I have this one located somewhere here so that we can always see. Um, the basic way to do, uh, to apply this to like, like the result that I, I reached. So I'll just have a con constant out. I don't need a shader for this, so I'll just use a constant shader. I don't need any like fancy, how to say, shaded stuff. So this is good. And then I'll use a box for this time. And then I'll also have a transform 3D vector. And I connect this guy here. And the first thing I'll do is I'll connect these colors to constant. Now I see the color is changing, but at the moment I only have one box. So uh, I need to get a transform. Wait, I'll use a 2D vector. So now I need to uh, generate and like tell him how many boxes I need. Uh, so, but I'll lower this down. Maybe might be too heavy for, for my computer. So I'll change this one to 20 by 20. And then I'll connect this guy here. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so right now I'm not seeing the right result and this is because the scale of the bo the boxes are too big. So I'll make this one smaller. Okay, now it looks better. Okay, so now I sort of see the result that I was looking for. However, it's, something is wrong. I think the depth buffer of the render is none. So click render and depth buffer mode standard. Okay, so now I don't see it through it. I think there's another thing I'm missing. I think the Z scale uh, is not specified here. The box has Z scale. So I'll change this one to transform 3D vector. And then I'll create a vector 3D join. So this one, 3D vector join. And then I'll reconnect this one here. Just doing this because I want to do. And then I'll have to scale out and then I'll scale it down here. Okay, so now I have all these three axes going down, and, but it's a bit small. And I think this is because this linear spread outputs only one. If you're using pipette, if you want the full screen, for some reason you have to set this to two. And with this, you should get the entire uh, screen. Right now, I think it's this small, so I'll change this one to 30. Okay, so now as you see, I am getting uh, my hand visualized right here. Okay, so this is getting really close. Um, the last thing I'll have to do is from so from my previous image that I showed you, I tweaked a bit on the Z axis. So right now, uh, it's only changing the color, but I also want these boxes to come to front. And to do so, I need to add a value to factor Z. So right now it's a bit messy. I just bring these ones lower. Then I'll bring this guy here. So right now Z is empty, but if I move this, they move, right? So what I would do is I'll have an HSL uh, color split, and then I'll connect the color output from pipette to here. And then I'll connect this lightness to Z. Let's see how it goes. 
and see like right now so I'm getting sort of like similar result but somehow uh, I think the boxes are the lighter part of the boxes are going to the other side so I have to use map node and then I connect map on map map value and then I connect these guys here and right now uh, it's mapped between 0 to 1 and the destination is 0 to 1 so I'll change this one to minus Minus zero, minus zero point five, and then I get these lighter boxes in the front and darker positions in the back. So yeah, this is kind of like the result that I wanted for today. Uh, here I'll change the box to segment because uh, it looks a bit better for me. So now it's a sphere, so that we can. A little bit looks better for me at least uh, so this is basically what I wanted to tell for today's share for today's tutorial so by using the image camera input you can actually convert it to make it look sort of like connect dish and it's quite easy by using this pipette uh, node it's really really uh, I mean easy and you can do quite a lot I mean if you change this uh, map input to saturation see how it changes uh, hue well, how it changes oh and also one more thing I forgot. Uh, so I was using damper node uh, for the previous image. I was using damper animation and I connected this to uh, Z uh, vector. And then I changed this uh, damper value to 0 0.3. Uh, by adding this, you get sort of like a damping results. So whenever the value changes, you see that these spheres are bumping. So it doesn't go back dynamically, but it has like in between. So it looks more natural. Okay, so this is all what I wanted to share. Uh, last, uh, you don't have to follow this tutorial, but if you're interested in adding more uh, segments to it, right now it's only uh, 900. But if your computer allows, we can actually use uh, instancing and buffer to make more uh, particles out of it so I'm gonna keep working on that if you're not interested in following this uh, uh, process uh, thanks for watching uh, and see you next time okay, so dynamic buffer uh, so we'll be using dynamic buffer buffer transform and then I'll use constant buffer constant buffer so this is the guy that I need right now it has a segment so I'll connect this transform in to uh, transform buffer so in between and I also if you've watched my uh, instancing tutorial you also need to use IID and tell him how many uh, segments that I need so I'll connect this guy to HSL this one what I have to avoid here is so this okay so transform is in dynamic buffer and I need to get the color out. It's quite easy. So I just have to connect this guy here. Okay, so with this I should be getting everything as an instance. So it's all working in GPU so it doesn't um, pressure my uh, C uh, CPU any longer. So by this I should be able to add a bit more. So I'll just say uh, I to turn on the camera okay so this linear spread is the one that is generating so right now it's 900 but I'll just add double 60 okay it looks way more uh, way more so now you see that it's more dense it looks really great but I think my computer can still perform so I change this to 100 okay it's still working I see my hands more clear with nicer color and to see buffer is working. I think the spheres uh, segments right now is too big so I'll make this one smaller. Okay now it's still working. Oh by the way if you want to have these uh, like lighter position come out you can just change these values here and then make it more like connectish. Okay so my computer can still handle so I could ch I'll change this to 150. Is, oh yeah, it's now getting a bit heavy. Uh, so I'll just stop it here.
But as you see, this is already sort of like Kinectish, right? Like my, right now my desk is a bit dark, so my hand pops up. But if you have a lighter or like white table, then you might get an opposite result. Uh, if so, you just have to use, I don't know, threshold or HSCV, CB node and change the input of the camera. So as I'm doing here, just change this contrast, makes darker part blacker. So looks more clear. You can also change the color by using HSCV saturation you can add. So by, by playing around with these, you can actually map, get the right results. So make sure that you play with this and then connect this to pipe it. Okay, so that was it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, so this is the la this was the last series for that's episode for my uh, imaging series. Uh, for next up, I haven't really planned yet. So if you have any suggestion, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.